What's going on everyone? Welcome to Moonbuilt Garage and welcome to part two of my budget DIY CNC plasma table build. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, I'll link to that up here. And in part one, I pretty much built the bulk of the frame. So I spent this morning kind of taking care of just some items that really didn't warrant a whole lot of attention in this video. I built the caster mounts, so I had some 3 8 plate left over from previous projects. So I cut those to size, drilled the 16 holes for the casters, and then I had to go and tap each of those holes for a 5 16 by 18 bolt. Then, since I cut them a little oversized, I trimmed off the bulk of the excess on my Milwaukee Porta Band and then obviously sanded everything smooth and welded them to the bottom of the legs. So now I got a rolling, rolling frame. I also took some angle iron uh, and welded in some leg supports. Leg supports and it's really just a frame for a lower shelf. Uh, so I got that taken care of. So the casters. Now, like I said in the last video, I'm kind of keeping track of the overall cost of this build to see just how budget it can be. Those casters were free. Uh, they were left over from some Craftsman toolboxes that I bought a while ago. I incorporated those in a different project into a rolling workbench and used some different casters. So I had those, but I will, um, I'll incorporate a cost, just a ballpark cost for the casters uh, at the end of the video. Also, the angle iron is stuff that I tend to keep on hand for projects. So, um, again, I'll go with a ballpark price on those, and I'll probably price that high, you know, since I, I did, I believe I bought it at one of the big box stores and not like a metal supply. If you go to like a metal yard, it'll probably be a lot cheaper, um, but I'll ballpark it high and we'll go from there. So, with that stuff done, I can really kind of start to focus in on what I think the important part of today's video is. So I really want to get the rail system for the gantry figured out today. Uh, like I said in the last video, the gantry is going to go along the long axis of the table. So it's going to ride on the short side. Uh, and that's for mainly, like I said in the last video, if I ever decide to expand this table, then I shouldn't have to build a new gantry. It'll already be wide enough for a four by eight or four by four. So that's, that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Um, now, for the gantry rails, I know you can buy linear rails, both flat, uh, make round ones, uh, and they're really nice, really smooth. The bearings that ride on them, they're, they're just good quality stuff, but they can get kind of pricey. And with me trying to keep this more budget-minded, I think what I'm going to go with is some eighth inch by three inch wide plate. So I'm going to mount this, not with magnets, I'm going to mount this to the side rails and leave the top and bottom, should give me about a half inch exposure both top and bottom. And that way, if I ever need to maybe replace this, I can flip it. If, say it gets a bunch of slag along the edge and it really messes up the ride of the gantry, I can flip it over or I can just easily replace it. It's cheap enough. Um, now, the bearings that are going to work with this are these V bearings. Focus. There we go. So you can see there's a V groove in these and they're going to ride right along the top. That's why you don't mount it with magnets for demonstration purposes only. The bearing will ride along this top rail, top and bottom. I'm gonna come up with a way that, that there's gonna be four bearings, front and back, one, one in back, one in front, same top and bottom. And the bottom ones are gonna apply just some extra pressure to the rail. I'll figure that out when I get to building the gantry. But, Overall, this is going to be my rail system for the gantry. I already know when I built the frame that this side and that side are perfectly parallel. So the only thing I really need to work on is making sure that the height of this 
rail above the frame is the same on both sides. And that should be relatively easy. All I'm gonna do is mark center line on both the rail and the frame. And then I'm gonna drill holes along that center line and then I'll clamp the rail to the frame, use those pre-drilled holes to mark the holes in the, in the tube. Then I'll drill and tap those holes probably for a quarter 20. Uh, those should be more than strong enough to support the rail. And then I'm gonna make the holes in the rail a little oversized. And that'll give me a little bit of adjustability if I need to up and down, front and back a little, not so much front and back, but up and down um, to get everything exactly even. Uh, as long as I have a good solid center line, everything's drilled properly, I shouldn't need to adjust it, but I'll give myself that little bit of adjustability. So that's the, uh, the plan for the rail. Let's get to that. All right, so you saw where I marked the center line on the side rail, and then I drilled the holes out one step above a quarter inch. Um, then I marked the center line on the frame, and then I used the hole to line up those lines. So I used the lines on the rail and lined up with the lines on the frame through the hole. Now, taking a pair of calipers, I should be half an inch. So if I come up to the front here, can't really see it because where I have the camera, but I'll show you. So up here on the front, if I line that up, I am 0.48 above the side rail. So a little bit lower than half an inch. Come to the back, and this side's lower. 0.415. So that means I need to raise the back up 
just a bit. So I'm gonna get this dialed in. Now obviously like a dial indicator would be great and I do have one, but I'll use the dial indicator once I get the gantry in place or get the, get the side piece once I figure out the mount for the gantry. I'll use a dial indicator actually and I'll run it along the rail and then I can really dial in this rail mount. But this will get me close enough for now. So I'm gonna dial this in and then uh, I'll get it mounted. All right, you guys get the idea. I still have two more holes to drill and tap on this side, and I still gotta cut the flat stock and drill all the holes and tap for the other side. So you don't need to see all that, you guys get the idea. I do have an idea though. So the bearing, when it comes to riding on that rail, which this feels really good by the way, there are a few little nicks in the plate that I can feel through the bearing for a plasma cutter, which I plan on having a torch height control, that's no big deal. Maybe if you were gonna be doing a router or an engraver or something like that, you probably buff those out maybe, but you can barely feel them. But my concern is that that's a sharp edge on both sides of that. And with the bearing riding over that over time, let me, let me see if I can show you this. I got a. Smaller piece of eighth inch flat stock. Let's see if I can show you this, see if I can get the camera to fo actually focus on this. So there's the bearing, okay? And it rides on that eighth inch flat stock. You can maybe see the gap in there. I'm not sure if this is gonna focus. Let me see if I can. So there's the bearing riding, all right? You can see the gap. Come on, that's not too bad. All right, so you get the idea. This edge, riding on that bearing over time, maybe wear a groove into the bearing. I doubt it, I think the bearing may be harder than that flat bar, probably is. But it, here's, here's my thought, I wanna try something. What I've got here is an air-driven chamfering tool. It's basically like a little mini router, but for metalworking. Um, I'll leave a link to it down below. But what it's got is this little cutting head here on the top, and then you can adjust the amount of chamfer by adjusting this wheel. You turn that and it raises or lowers this base, exposing more or less of that cutting head. So, I'm gonna use this, I think. Let me lock this down to a setting. I'm gonna use this to put a slight chamfer on that flat piece of stock and see how that affects how the bearing rides. Okay, yeah. So that still works really well and it gives a little bit of a flat area for that bearing to ride on. Let's see if I can show you that. Probably not too well because I didn't chamfer all the way to the end. Um, but that give, definitely does give it a little bit of a flat area for that bearing to ride on. Still rides nice and smooth. 
Yeah, so I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chamfer the edges of the rails on the bench. All right, guys, so I'm just going to continue drilling and tapping holes. Nothing really that you guys need to, need to see. Uh, next video, I'm going to be figuring out the sides of the gantry, how the bearings are going to mount, how they're going to tension to keep constant pressure on the rail, that kind of stuff. Probably, hopefully, maybe the shape of the gantry, um, but I need to figure out, I think, the torch height control first, so I know where that's going to sit in relation to the gantry, and that's going to put the cutting head in relation to the table. It, there's a lot to figure out, but I'm definitely going to be, I think, working on the sides of the gantry, getting that mounted onto the rail and get, a, get an idea how all that's going to play together. Appreciate you guys for watching. I almost forgot to do the cost breakdown. So, last video, the 2x2 two two steel for the frame, we were at 127.92. Today, with the angle iron for the base or for the leg support, aka shelf, um, I figure if you get it from the big box store for a six foot section, I priced it this morning, it's $24.98. For a six foot, um, I had two six foot sections. Um, so based on the amount that I used, so that comes out to 35 cents per inch. I used a total of 116 inches of angle iron. So figure that's going to cost $40.60. Now I know you can get it cheaper if you go to your, you know, like a, like a steel yard or someplace like that. But I figured. I'll go with a higher estimate because that type of stuff might be like, oh, I need to run out and grab some. It might be more convenient to go to a big box store to get that. So $40.60 for the angle iron. The flat bar for the rail here. I bought that when I went to the steel yard. A 10-foot section of that cost me $17, which comes out to $0.14 cents per inch. I'm using 68 inches of it, so that it comes out to $23.12. And then the casters. So like I said, my casters were free. I mean, these chrome bad boys. Mmm. Mmm. Who wouldn't want chrome casters on a plasma table? Yeah. Anyway. If I figure if you had to go out and buy this size caster, I think it's a four and a half inch caster. Figure on average, 15 bucks a caster. So that's another 60 bucks. So right now, as we sit, I'm looking at, I'm at a grand total of 251.64. Not too bad. Like I said, I don't actually have that into this. Um, in a way I do, I mean, I had the angle iron. Casters came with toolboxes that I bought, so there's that. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.